All right, so welcome to a quick video, stage 11, should Peter Sagan have got disqualified from the Tour de France sprint finish? So we're going to go through the screenshots and I'll show you what my opinion is and what my reasoning behind it is and obviously leave yours in the comments. So first of all, this is the sprint setup, heads on shot, we've got the helicopter shots to come over. So Sagan um, is here on the left hand side. Um, I'll use a little pointer because I think that might be a little bit easier for, for people to see. So this is where Sagan is. On the left-hand side here, Wout Van Aert's here, Venturini, Brian Kokkar, uh, Bennett, Ewan, Mads Pedersen. Um, I think that must be Walshard, and that's Mazgetz. So anyway, this is basically where the most important thing is. So Sagan have moved up past Venturini, and the gap was closing here. So you can see it, it's sort of corner, and Wout Van Aert's running straight. Sagan's got this space. So we'll go to the next shot. Sagan realises here, I'm not going to make it through. So he basically pushes Wout Van Aert to the right to get Wout Van Aert out of the way. Then he really leans on him to push him out of the way because there's no space. Then after that, he then sprints straight. Um, and then at the end, it's a heads up, like photo finish between these four. Uh, Ewan gets it, then Bennett, then Sagan, then Wout Van Aert. So from that shot, it doesn't look like crazy, bad, badly wrong what Sagan did, but still maybe badly wrong. I think the helicopter shots really show. And from my first instinct, I thought he should have got disqualified. Um, and I think the helicopter shot's go to show that. So you can see he's already gone past this gap. He's taken a risk going down this line, right? So obviously, you know, a sprinter's not going to slam on their brakes. That's obvious. And generally, my view is that most of what sprinters do is okay. And I think the UCI generally disqualify too many people in sprints um, when it's like a bodily contact. When it's like deviation of nines, they're really bad at disqualifying people for that. And I think they should be harsher. But I think this, like Sagan here, has no space. Wout Van Aert is on the barrier. There is no space like here to go. And if you, it's really hard to show from the screenshots, but obviously watch the video. It's Eurosport, the, the overhead shot, shot. So watch them and then you make your own decision up. But from what you can see here though, it's like there was a gap here. He he made the first gap. He's just got to wait for Wout Van Aert. Like he, you, you can't suddenly lob him out because you might say, oh, like it's okay because he pushed him. But the issue is, is this, is that Sagan here has no space and is literally pushing Wout Van Aert. If Sam Bennett who's here was closer would have caused a crash guaranteed crash venturini like here isn't trying to go through a gap which doesn't exist i know obviously you know it's really easy to say that when you're sitting here um but when it's 70k an hour sprint it's obviously chaos so you know i'm not criticizing anyone all i'm saying is i think the uci was correct because if you allow this to happen what will happen is people will go through nutty and nuttier gaps and then there'll be more and more crashes like this is very lucky it didn't have a crash Look at Sagan's, ang the angle of his bike compared to the floor. If you drew like a right angle there, it's it's crazy. And like, you know, obviously Wout Van Aert and Sagan are very good bike handlers, but that shouldn't be the issue. The issue should be like, if there's not a gap, you can't just lob people out of the way. Like that's not the way it works. Obviously then afterwards, you know, there's a, that suddenly he goes straight. But if you look here, like Sagan, in my opinion, like probably had enough space, but even if he didn't, like you just have to back off. You can't just push him out of the way. Because as I said before, you know, if anyone's handlebars were here, Wout Van Aert's hooking those handlebars, big crash, 70k an hour crash, Venturini's going down here, everyone behind him's going down. And I mean, after this, yeah, fair enough, he sprints straight, but I don't even argue there was enough room, um, like, towards the end for Sagan to go to it. And I think, you know, if you if you watch how everyone else sprinted on that stage, it, it was very respectful. But I mean, here, it's like, it's not like Wout Van Aert closed the door. You can see Wout Van Aert, if anything, actually straightened up. His bike is going right, obviously, he's, like, swinging it, but... He then actually straightened up before here. So I, I think, you know, if Wout Van Aert was swerving, then yeah, fair enough, Sagan's got it right. But he didn't. He he went completely straight. Um, it's very obvious from the headshots, a heads up shot that he went straight. He actually moved out. Like Sorry, he moved out this way because of Sagan. The way the road was going, Sagan would have had space because the barrier is going left down here. So there would have been space. Wout Van Aert springs straight. There's that white line that's curving. Wout Van Aert was like there and went completely straight to the line. Fair enough, okay? And I think Sagan, look how much he moved. He was here, like on that barrier there, where the, where the phone was, which, okay, fire, there shouldn't be a phone there. And now he's there, and now he's there. I mean, Sagan swerved for sure and pushed Van Aert. Um, you know, okay, Van Aert, you know, probably wouldn't have won the stage, but that's beyond the point. He endangered the other riders because if someone was there, hit handlebars and a crash down, they go. So that's my reasoning behind why I think the UCI was correct and then Sagan should have got disqualified. Um, I think sometimes Sagan, you know, sprints stupidly. And I think that's one, an example where, you know, it's not, it's not like you can criticize him. I mean, every, like a lot of people try and do that gap, but I think you've got to have them change the mentality of sprints. Like you can't push people out because 
you know, if Sam Bennett's there, it's a crash. Um, so anyway, those are my thoughts. Let, you know, let me know in the comments what yours are. Um, I think most people are pretty polarized about this. I think most people think probably probably was correct. Um, I know some other people think, nah, definitely not, definitely not. Um, but yeah, in my personal opinion, I think the USA was correct. Um, it's a shame for the green jersey competition. I think it, in some ways it, make it will make it more competitive, but I think ignoring that, you've got to disqualify them. You can't have people just shoulder barging their way out um, because you're going to cause more and more crashes. And everyone's like, oh, Jakobsen like, crashes. It's like, yeah, but this is the issue. If you allow things like this, it just gets worse and worse and worse because people don't know where the barrier is. If that is always a DQ, people don't, won't make, make the risk. And then all Sagan will backs off the pedal stroke. If he didn't pedal for half a stroke, I know obviously he'd lose a lot of momentum. The gap would have opened, he could have gone. So anyway, there we go. Cheers for watching and uh, see you in the next one.